Hey guys, Kendra here. Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing my much overdue wrap up. So I'm just going to be telling you just a brief summary. I don't really have any deep thoughts on any of these books. It just wasn't that kind of reading month for me. I read a lot of good books, but I didn't read that many great books. I did read a couple, but not any that were really super thought provoking for me. They're definitely very well written. We'll get to that. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> I'm like, no, I love them, but I, I don't really have things to say about them. <laughs> it's like the story of my life. I did read a lot for Reading Women, so, so I'm not going to tell you about all of those because that would be a spoiler for some of the things we have coming up. But I will tell you about an interview that's already up. Um, I read this for, um, we interviewed her on the podcast, and this is Everything Here is Beautiful by Mira T. Lee. This is by Pamela Dorman Books. And we interviewed about this book. Uh, this is about two Chinese American sisters. The younger one has schizophrenia and it's about how Miranda takes care of her younger sister and just the decades of the toll that takes on them and their family and their relationships. So this one is really devastating. Went to full book coma. It was just, I don't know how she wrote this as her debut novel. I don't because like this is a really intense book. Definitely go check out that interview if you're interested in this book or even if you're not she really has some great thoughts on how we portray schizophrenia and mental health uh, in you know our society. So let's go through some of these books. Um, so I read um, The Force of Nature by Jane Harper. This is for out from Flatiron and I was sick for about a week with some sort of bug. I don't even know um, what it was. So I wanted something that was fun and so as soon as this came out I picked this up on audio. I love the narrator fantastic and uh, this is j I just love Jane Harper's writing she doesn't need all of these bells and whistles like big twists or whatever in her books she has the writing chops she doesn't need to hide it beneath you know all these little sparkly things <laughs> she's just really good she's just really good at what she does this classic detective fiction I love how it's kind of almost like a throwback but set still in contemporary time and I just love what Jane Harper does so if you like detective uh, fiction you will probably like this one and then this is the girl in the tower this is the sequel to Catherine Arden's Bear Nightingale this is the second in a trilogy I can't tell you much about this book because it's a total spoiler for the end of the last book but Vasya ends up going to the city in this one and dealing with her magical abilities there that is all I can say I will say I didn't enjoy this as much as I enjoyed the the bear and the nightingale I felt like there was something lost by not having that rural Russian setting, but I'd be interested to see how it goes farther. And also we did learn a lot about the culture of the city of, of Moscow, you know, in this one, but um, I'm still definitely gonna read the third one. So one of the books that I really loved was the first book I finished in February, um, and that is The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. I read this book, I actually listened to the audiobook. Um, I read this book in three days. It was so good and at the end I just had like clutched the book to my chest and was like I won't be the same ever again like I just can't even breathe. Cyril Avery is fantastic. So Cyril Avery was born in 1945 in Ireland and it basically chronicles his life as a gay man living in Ireland and just what his life is like and just what Ireland was like at the time and what what I think John Boyne does a great job of, he's amazing at dialogue, it's so funny, but also just characters, he just gets them. You don't, you don't have to like get really deep into their psyche to understand these characters and to know them and you can see them and just see how Avery is such a vibrant character. I really enjoyed that and just uh, all the feelings with this book. And so if you have been hesitant to pick up this book because of the length, don't. Just go run to your bookstore, do not walk, run and pick it up and just prepare for all of the feelings. It's not a perfect book. I have quibbles, but my enjoyment of this book is definitely five stars. So you, there you go. I just love it, guys. <laughs> I just have so many feelings. So many feelings. Now, I also have feelings about this book, but not in the same vein. Um, the next book I'm going to talk about is Future Home of Living God by Louise Erdrich. I love Louise Erdrich. All right. I love her writing. I love her characters. I love The Roundhouse. I'm going to read everything that she has written, which is the only reason why I finished this book. I didn't enjoy this book. I didn't enjoy the plot or really the concept much at all. Um, and I felt like she was fighting with it a bit, like she wanted to just make it work. And I think in a time when you have so many of these women suffering horribly in the near future kind of stories, like uh, the Red Clocks and the Power, well, I guess 
verse, but you know what I'm saying. In that kind of environment where there's so many, you kind of have to stand out, and I just don't think this one did. But again, Louise Erdrich does have so much skill in her writing and characterization, which you saw in this book, but I just didn't like the plot or the story. So uh, just go go read The Roundhouse. I've heard The Antelope Woman is amazing. That's the next one I'm going to pick up by Louise Erdrich. Uh, but she's, she's a very talented writer, but not not in this. I mean, yeah. It pains me to say anything negative about Louise Erdrich because I love her so much. <laughs> I didn't love that book. So the next one I'm going to talk about is the next book on my uh, New Year's resolution author. So the first was Octavia Butler. Read her. And the next one, Hilary Mantel's Wolf Hall. Um, I read a lot of long books this month. Wow. Um, I did this one on audio. And I will say that was a really intense audio. I probably would not recommend it on audio. But I enjoyed it, but it's not really one I would recommend, if that makes sense. Probably doesn't. We're just going to go with it. Uh, this print edition is by Henry Holt. And I enjoyed this book. This is about Thomas Cromwell and just about the whole Henry VIII wanting to divorce his wife and just moves from there. And I don't know. I... I don't have words to describe why I enjoyed this book so much. It's so detailed. It's written in present tense, which kind of throws you, but then it also looks at all the politics and different things. One of the things that I enjoyed, which I'm, if you didn't already know I was a nerd uh, from my last Friday Reads video, you will know that I am totally a nerd uh, because I spent a ridiculous amount of time looking at these family trees. I love genealogies. I love family trees. And so I love this. You probably can't see all of them, but there are two here, which is really exciting. And um, it could just, it's the same, almost, it, it's similar, not the same as my Riverside Shakespeare uh, genealogy for all those history plays. But I, I really enjoyed this. And this one, the Man Booker Prize, and the second one in the series, Bringing Up Bodies, also won the Man Booker Prize. And so I'm hoping the third one will. Um, my plan is to bring out bodies in the second half of the year and kind of prepare for myself for the third one whenever it comes out. I think it's coming out in 2019. Let's hope. But I did really enjoy this one and I really love the historical fiction and the detail and just everything that she did with it. It's just enjoyable and I don't really have like all of the words I would like to describe this book because she used them all. It's just nothing left guys. It just. I just really enjoyed it. But it is really intense and really dense and it requires you to slow down and think about what's going on. So uh, it's definitely not one of those fast binge read type of novels. Pages for You by Celia Brownrigg. This, I, I don't feel like I can talk about this book very much right now because I want to read Pages for Her, which is the sequel, which she wrote, several, the author wrote several years later. And I feel like this book in and of itself is unfinished. Like when I was reading it, I was like, that's it? Like, that's the way it ends? Like I knew it wouldn't end well. Like it's obviously a, like this tragic love story between two women, but I felt like something was missing. So I'm going to wait and review them together so that I have the whole story and we can, you know, have that conversation with all of the knowledge needed. Because yeah, I'm like, what happens? Like, what's going on with this? So stay tuned for this one. It's Eternal Life by Dara Horn. This is all from W.W. Norton. Well, I'm th thinking about how to talk to you about this book. There are so many spoilers in this book. So we're just going to give you the basic premise. And then you can go and read it for yourselves if you're fascinated with time and family and everything that I am. So what happens is that Rachel is living in the time when the Romans are ruling over the, the Jews in Israel. And they're still uh, able to make sacrifices in the temple. So she is there and she trades her death to save her son's life. So she has lived for thousands of years. So we're now in the present and we're kind of learning more about her backstory, what happened to her. She meets this mysterious guy from her past and we're wondering what on earth he's doing there. So the author basically takes a look at this character, takes a look at Rachel and looks at what living thousands of years would do to a person's psyche. I mean, we as human beings really live, what, 70, 80 years at most for the average, whatever lifespan. And so our brains only have to deal with so much emotional trauma. Eventually it does end, but for Rachel, it hasn't ended for thousands of years. And she knows she's just going to keep on going and never die. And just the psychological look at this 
woman is just so intense for such a short book. And I feel like that is basically the whole book. You're looking at this woman and how she deals with her family and her life and the decisions she's trying to make. Because in the present, she wants to die. She just wants it to end. She can't do it anymore. And just what happens with that. So this book I definitely think would be for people who enjoy that kind of psychological look. There's not a ton of plot to this book. There's not a ton of action at all, really. Uh, so we just see her as a character. I would recommend this book, but I don't think that this book is for everyone per se. I definitely think this is for the type of person who loves that look, that psychological study of a character, um, and doesn't really need as much plot um, as, as other readers might. So um, it just depends on your preferences. So definitely check this out if this sounds like something that you would enjoy. Next one you already know I read and that is The Odyssey by Homer. This is the translation by Emily Wilson. I can't recommend this translation enough. This translation is beautiful. The introduction is amazing and her look at women in this uh, text by Homer and just addressing a lot of different things. It's educational, it's really accessible, and it's used modern English. I can't get enough of this book. Um, also, I read The Song of Achilles like right after I finished this one, and I love this one by Madeline Miller. One of the things that I love about this is that she knows so much Greek mythology, these little tiny details are in the book. You wouldn't know that if you weren't like that intensely into Greek mythology. So I really enjoyed this. this is about Achilles and his companion uh, Patroclus and uh, they are lovers and it just moves through that. And I really love Madeline Miller's storytelling. It's really the thing that I love about her because she takes all of these different myths, sometimes they're contradictory, and like puts them together and makes them behave and makes a novel out of them. And that is fantastic. And this one she doesn't use as many as she does in Circe. Circe is insane. Like I was looking stuff up all the time with that one. Uh, but I really enjoyed this because it is focuses more on just these two characters, but also includes a lot of uh, the detail of the mythology from Greek mythology and the different gods and goddesses and how they interact and the personalities and different things. I really enjoyed that. So also I just read the Odyssey. I had not, I mean this one's more based on the Iliad obviously, but um, I would just been in that world so it was easy to make the jump to this one. And I'm glad I read all of these things before I read Circe because Circe is just so detailed and includes way more myths than um, just the Song of Achilles because this one just focuses on really myths around Achilles. So there you go. I'm pretty sure I have just been talking about these same three books, uh, Circe, Song of Achilles, and Emily Wilson's The Odyssey for all across all of my channels of communication as I talked about it on the podcast this month for our theme of classic women and on social media, all the places. So when I found out that Madeline Miller and Emily Wilson are going to be in conversation at the New York Public Library, which is then streamed to their podcast, I just had a moment. I was so, so excited and I still am. I cannot wait for that. I think that's happening in April or May. So keep an eye out for that podcast because it is going to be amazing because these two women who study Greek mythology it studied classics for so long. It's just fantastic. So yeah, and now I really want to read the Aeneid. Like I haven't read it in like, I don't know, seven years, but I kind of want to read it now. Does, do you know any female translations of uh, the Aeneid? I found one of the Iliad, which I'm definitely interested in picking up, uh, but definitely let me know if you have any of those. Also, if you have any more Greek retellings right now, I have the Penelopead by uh, Margaret Atwood. I have the House of Names by Colm Tobin and um, one other one that I can't remember, so I guess it doesn't matter. But if you have any more retellings of Greek mythology, a Roman mythology, whatever, please definitely comment down below because I just need more in my life. I'm not obsessed enough, apparently. So that's all for me for now. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.